In 2018, the Cincinnati Zoo said farewell to part of their history, something that they rarely ever do, but it does set them apart from many other zoos. On this episode, we are looking at their Wildlife Canyon exhibit. I'll briefly show you what it once was, what it became, and stick around to hear what it will become. Wildlife Canyon's name didn't really give any hints as to what it displayed. Rather, it referred to the fact that it was settled below a steep hill. But for as long as the zoo's been open, this area has mostly consistently displayed hoofed animals of all varieties. Looking far back at the zoo's 1878 map, this entire area was simply two paddocks for elk and white-tailed deer. Jump forward to 1942, the deer line was born as part of the Works Progress Administration. More hoofed creatures like llamas, red deer, bison, and even yaks were down this line. It wasn't until 1989 when it went through another overhaul, thus creating the exhibits of modern times, which was known for not only displaying hoofstock, but in a couple of cases, animals you won't ever see in a zoo again. It had a good run, essentially retaining its purpose for 140 years. And after this tour, I'll explain what will take its place. Let's begin. It's definitely not that big of a deal. After the rare animals from Wildlife Canyon left, this exhibit became a dud. But still, what you're looking at is the only way you'll ever be able to get to walk through it again. This canyon had two pathways on either side that acted as both exits and entranceways. However, people with strollers used to complain a lot that they couldn't get down here simply because they didn't know this side existed. The very first exhibit, though it wasn't built for one, last contained a single emu. Ironic considering I kept on mentioning that this was for hoofstock only. Before this guy moved into this spot, Walter the Warthog called this his home. This particular bird has since been transferred, however, and emu is still part of the zoo's bird show. Alright, to the next paddock. The largest one down the line, last contained capybaras. A perfect home, shade on every square inch, and a nice pool in the back. But why so large, and why such expensive canopies for these two exhibits? That's because they were designed for the rare Sumatran rhinoceros. Less than 100 left in the wild. Around 10 in human care, but not a single one has lived in a public zoo since the last one left Cincinnati. The zoo was able to breed not one, not two, not four, but three Sumatran rhinos within a seven year span. Unfortunately, the mother, Emmy, passed in 2009, Patriarch Ipo passed in 2013, and second-born daughter Suchi in 2014, leaving the zoo no other option but to end the breeding program and to transfer the third-born Harapan to live with his brother in Dallas at a sanctuary in Sumatra. Despite these dire tragedies, hope is still alive, considering in Dallas, since his transfer in 2007, has become a father of two. Even though all shreds of physical evidence from the Sumatran rhino are now gone from this area, after seeing the world's reaction to Harapin leaving the zoo, it's good to know that they'll always be remembered in Cincinnati. I could go on for hours about this, but I ask that you please read more on the Sumatran rhino as much as you can below. Next to the world's largest rodents was the smallest paddock. Replacing the Red River Hogs in 2013 were the endangered Visayan warty pigs. I simply asked director Thane Maynard why the zoo received them in the first place, and he told me that Wildlife Canyon was to be focused on Asian hoofstock only. Well, that didn't work out. Still, it is sad to see them go, because there's no telling that they'll make their return to the zoo anytime soon. The following exhibit that catches your attention is across from them and actually isn't even part of Wildlife Canyon at all. Rather, this is the Eagle Eerie a combination of two aviaries that equals nearly the entire length of all the paddocks. If you'd like to see more on it, check out my very first episode in the card above. The canyon continued with a family of Sichuan Talkins, Mother Sally, Father Harry, and their two offspring, Dale and Meg. Out of all of the recent animals down here, the Talkins had the most success in breeding in the last decade, which probably plays a big factor into why people will miss them so much with their departure. Their final neighbors to the right were the only animals that lived together. The last three paddocks were somewhat recently combined so that they could mix their Shavalski's wild horses and their domestic Bactrian camels. The zoo sort of acted as a retirement home for the elderly horses, and the camels bred as much as they could. The very last exhibit, however, was empty at the canyon's end. 
last home to the emu we saw earlier. After mentioning the Wildlife Canyon's closure so many times, I'll now explain what it will become. By the start of November 2018, the zoo prepared for what will be their newest attraction and first phase of their $150 million master plan. This is the site of the future, Rue Valley. The entire space will be converted into a walkthrough kangaroo and wallaby yard, with a new rest stop overlooking it, a rope course placed in animal territory, and the most unique thing about it, a home for little blue penguins. So far I haven't seen or heard one person give any sort of praise for this idea. On one hand, they're getting rid of an area that once displayed some of the world's rarest animals for a walkthrough concept that's overused. But on the other, it was mostly sorely outdated. The star power of Wildlife Canyon plummeted once the rhinos left, and maybe it's time for something new. I would really like to hear your opinion on the matter. Regardless of what anyone thinks, we get to look forward to Rue Valley opening in 2020. Thank you for watching Zoo Tours, and thank you for walking with me through Wildlife Canyon one last time. Have a nice day.